Hi, and it's Rob from Lapbook. And something we haven't done for a little while, uh, we've got an on online interview with somebody. That's somebody, somebody you've talked to before. It's uh, Jack Gibbon. And Jack's got a whole pile of good things to talk about today. Uh, we're going to be talking about his own lap and also uh, bringing lap into college. So, Jack, I can see narrative legacies in front of me. Could you uh, come and say hello, please? Yeah, we'll do. Okay. Oh. First, gonna... <laughs> Hi, Jack. How are you doing? Hello there. Yeah, all good. Thank you. That's great news. Okay, let's start off then by just explaining to people what narrative legacies is. So, could you have a go at that? Yeah, so narrative legacies is something I created uh, mostly recently to get a bit more of an umbrella brand for the Clash of Cosmos and for the D and Ds I run over the past couple of years since uh, now since Clash of Cosmos became a thing. Yeah. Um, it's mainly to kind of get our name a little bit more out there as a brand and to help us then get moving with further projects. Mm -hmm. So and. It, Obviously, has come from Clash of Cosmos, which was around since 2020. And so I know, Rob, you, you played one of our games back in 2021. I think I you played two, didn't you? I played a couple, yeah. So uh, yeah. for anybody who's not, who doesn't remember, who wasn't wasn't around for the Clash, was an online uh, Clash of the Cosmos it was an online lab that Jack created during lockdown. Uh, and honestly, it was an awful lot of fun. It was a good. I think I played one and NPC another. It was a really good, good fun uh, online lap. Back from the time when online online laps were really kicking off. But that wasn't. It wasn't really the plan, Jack. Was it to make it a purely online lap? You always wanted to get real, bring it into the real world. Yeah, it was meant to be uh, an, a live game, but unfortunately, due to lockdown, we had to downsize it by a lot and bring it to online, which worked really well. Um, really got some big, big success within the first event. We had 100 yep. people on a Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of people on on a Facebook page at once, but it worked, which was great. So then yeah. Crash exists as your lap. A narrative now exists mm. to narrative legacies now exist to become brand to run that lap under, uh, but also to do other things like the D D games you're running as well. That, that's that's yeah. what I did. Could you just tell me a little bit about the D D about what you're doing with D D at the moment? So with D D games, they narrative legacies, as you can see by the logo here, um, it kind of is our route to get players used to the world of Clash of the Cosmos. So we actually use the Clash of the Cosmos world uh, about 40 to 50 years in the past yeah, uh, to give players a bit of understanding of what's happened in the past to bring this to the new world. Um, so right now I've got about three groups going at the moment. So Three groups is quite a handful, actually. That's that really nice. So what you're doing is effectively is you're build, you've got the classic Cosmos universe and you've got what it is and you know kind of what your backstory is, but you're filling in the backstory by people having people play through it? Yeah, people playing through it and understanding the context of what's going on and why the world is why it, why it is, why the time frame is what it is. Um, so that's going to give people some bits. So that's good. So that time that's finished, you're going to have a player base who really understands kind of the law and the history of, of Clash, of, Clash of the Cosmos. And yeah. also people who can talk about it, who can talk about it first, um, firsthand as well. Yeah, first hand experience. And they get to see, because I run them like how we used to do with the LARPs, I used to run them kind of everything is live. Yeah. Um, but obviously, D roll dice rolls and things, and they can talk and things. But at the same time, it's keeping that live feel. Yeah. Um, I do downtimes so that actually they can do things in their downtime to yeah. keep the world going. So that, that would make sense. And then the world kind of just ticks on. And then mm. from what we were chatting we just before we came on, everyone, but it sounds like Jack, Jack, you want to do go to do a, a Clash of the Cosmos LARP. In, a, in about a year and a half, two years, is it by, by 2026? Yeah, around that time, um, due to just money, things at the moment, logistics yeah. aren't really there. But by 2026, we should have some good amount of money coming in, yeah. um, ready to go for it. Um, we've got all the plot written for it, but now yeah. it's the logistics. It's getting all the money in for it. No, no, that's it. That's a big thing. It's, it's getting them because I'm not, I mean, if you don't, if you don't, if you if you've never run a lab, what you might not understand is that it's not a question of just taking money and buying things. You've actually got to pre-do a lot of work, uh, yeah, before you can actually pay up 
pay, yeah, and later on, it's only later on you pay that off when enough people come yeah, to yeah. an event. It's a, it's it's quite an investment by uh, starting a LARP up, and um, you're trying to do it right, as far as I'm concerned. By you've got your world, you you know how that's going to play, and now you're building up the resources to play it well. Yeah, yeah. So right now, currently, I've just written actually on my laptop, which is above this. I've actually just written currently writing the combat rules yeah uh, which is also the health and safety side of things so um, oh yeah yeah and that'll be coming out in the next week or so well that's awesome on um, facebook cool so we've mentioned that clash of the cosmos is fun and good but could you give people like a flavor of uh what it's about so Cl- clash of cosmos lrp is a on oh, was online uh, fantasy game so it's high fantasy like you'd find at games such as profound decisions uh curious pastimes false heroes mm-hmm. a local one down here in cornwall chaos gate yeah um but we're very much the the high fantasy side of things but not following the generic formula okay we've got much different races that you might not some of them are more generic to what dnd you see in like dnd games okay but adding our own flavor to them you're basically taking high fantasy and then making it yours, basically giving it something that yeah. so that people won't walk walking and they won't think, oh no, that's that's a generic elf or ranger. That's something a little bit different. Now how now how do yeah. I go play with that? Yeah. So our races include things such as as you've seen before, Rob, mm. um, we've had humans in the game, elves in the game, half elves, tieflings, yeah, uh, beast folk. So yeah. We kind of mixed it up over the years a little bit. Um, and some of the races are now getting a bit more development over time. Yeah. Uh, half giants, etc. So, yeah. A lot of fun. So, so awful fun there, bring, bringing all those together. Okay, then. So, if we... Now, you now you recently released a really good trailer video uh, for, mm. for, for Clash of the Codos, which I've seen. And I, um, anybody who's watching this... Uh, I'll put the link to that in the show in the show notes. Yeah, in the in in the description, so you can just click on and and go and go and watch Jack's trailer. But you built that trailer as part of a college course, didn't you? Yeah. So I did. A, um, I've literally today just finished the entire course, okay. uh, which was a, a level three uh, for uh, level three film and media course, mm-hmm. uh, where the FMP was to build. Either a music video, a film, a short film, documentary, etc. Yeah, of your choice. Okay, and you have to do it within two months. So you have two months to to do a project to assemble video, and to get that out. And so you chose to look to look to LARP and to look to Clash of the Cosmos. Yeah, I chose to look at Now at Legacies and, and Clash because it was something I've always wanted to get advertisement going for again. Because um, yeah. we had a few years where we just kind of lulled. Yeah, and I just wanted to bring it back and redo it. Hence, why the the new rebrand is uh, narrative legacies. New brand looks really nice, and then you've got the new video. So when you took this into college, it's a, it's a media course, so they're expecting, I guess, a diverse selection of what people want to do. Yeah. But how do they react to actually bringing LARP into LARP into it and shooting around LARP? So um, one of the lecturers that I had actually runs a LARP within here in Cornwall. So it was a little bit easier for him to understand what I was going for. Right. Um, um, yeah. The guy's name is actually typically Rob, and he runs uh, Chaos Gate. Well, so all uh, the Bob's in LARP are good. <laughs> it's good to get a shout out there for Chaos Gate. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the Bob shout. Thank you for the Chaos Gate shout. So uh, yeah. So Chaos. So he runs Chaos Gate. So he knows about LARP. He understands what we're, what we're what we're about. So you yeah, he understands. Go- we haven't did have to go for the thing of like, well, this is lap and this is what it is, which is hard to do sometimes. Actually, always. Yeah. yeah. It's very hard to explain to new people who are just coming into the hobby. Yeah. Um, and I always try and advertise it as best as I can. Hence we're doing this with you guys. We're doing this and then we 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 keep on trying to tell people about what way it's wonderful and be it might not be what you expect. It's probably gonna be better than you expect. But that's yeah. yeah. So when you shot that, vi- so you, you just shot that one video, then. So I guess you had to do formal planning, planning for it, and things like storyboards and uh, shooting plans and health and safety. Yeah, yeah. There was risk assessments. There was storyboarding. There was script writing. There yeah. was 
um, post and pre-production. Yeah. So, which all comes into hand. Um, you may so for the people that are on our Instagram that we did do a post on our Instagram of yeah. the pre-production of our production phase where we had the green screen. Oh, so yeah. I was showing them what, what we have on the green screen. Uh, and that you can see in the film we're all kind of it's not hard to to figure out where the green screen is, but once you once you understand where we put it, you'll see. You'll see. Um no, but, the green yeah, screen if, um, sorry, go on. Yeah, go on. No, no, carry on, carry on. Okay, I just say when you do watch it, the, the green 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 segment just at the beginning where Jack's introducing things that looks looks really good. So you take the idea, you. Of, you take the idea, you took the idea, which I really liked. Of you're going to introduce an idea, and then you kind of build up the introduction, and then you launch into that the, the LARP segment of the trailer. So you, it's it's not straight into LARP; it's actually easing people in. That that was intentional. So the idea was that I wanted to make it as immersive as I could. So it was all shot in POV, okay. uh, which you may have not been able to notice when we were filming, yeah. but it was done primarily in POV. Um, so for reference, people that might not understand what POV is, sure. uh, that is a first person perspective. Mm-hmm. You are seeing through the eye of the camera. Yeah. Um, so I was pretty much uh, doing that through um doing shot searches, very close up shots, very far away shots, yep. shots that are kind of going up and down. Yeah. But um, you'll notice it more when we did the combat segments. Uh, those segments kind of show it more. The actual side of it of easing people in was more just to kind of introduce narrative legacies again Yeah. and to introduce class again, because obviously having a bit of time where we did post, but didn't have time to really get in depth anymore. Yeah. Coming back and doing this has really helped that. So that really helped help to get going, and that's helped you assemble the video. And there's one thing about that video I did. If it, again, please follow the link. It, it's it's good. Yeah, that it didn't strike me as being a very typical lap trailer. Uh, a lot of lap trailers are all about the law and the game and and how the game looks. But this wasn't. It seemed to me that it was more about the people, and more about the fact that there were people playing, having fun. And even though they'd just been playing for a big site soon, they're just going to go off and have and have a, and spend some time together with friends later on. And it seemed to emphasize the social part a lot. A lot. It gave that you mm. for for you for Amy for the people who haven't played before. Yeah, it, it was our way of introducing not just network legacies, not just Clash, but LARP to the Cornish scene yeah. a little bit more than it normally would be promoted. But also up country, some people that may not even know what LARP is. Um, yeah can follow our links and you know you'll see kind of what larp is to a degree on not just an in character but on an oc standpoint yeah. um which really helps get players to be more interested in our game uh and yeah. interested in the hobby um because we're not all just there to to be in a field hit each other with foam swords and call it a day it's enjoying that community yeah it is actually one of the things i do like is that yeah, that little bit of time before and after a lap where the game stopped or the game hasn't started yet, but you're just going around talking to everybody and saying hello, and it's a huge, like a whole family of good friends coming together and just just chilling, relaxing, and getting to know each other bef- before and after the game goes. It's a really good feeling. Mm-hmm. I think I'd say that's one of the best feelings for from from lap. Yeah, it's that community. I yeah. think that's what so important to LARP is the community and it grows and it it drops and it changes over time yeah um even within different games cp have had it a few times yeah uh over the years where they've had switches even in lockdown they had a massive turn obviously new new owners and things now yeah um which i'm very happy to say is looking really good um yeah this this first this first this year under the new ownership looks it is very positive yeah, very positive, and they seem to be that they've really honed in on what, what they want from LARP. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think that's important that the owners of a LARP don't just want to run a LARP, but they want to achieve something with it? And they're going for something. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd agree. I'd agree with that as well. Got to say, awesome mug. <laughs> I'm trying to hide the logo because it's copyright. Uh, okay, that's okay. But I, I'm sure. Game of Thrones. Even for once, I'm saying, I think. 
I was okay, okay, the drag. That's that's been great. So we we know now a lot more about narrative legacies. We know a lot more about Clash of the Cosmos, and we know that you've managed to actually work LARP into a college course, which that's something that's been like a, an ongoing theme in LARP book for years. Is that how LARP can reach out not just to new audiences, but can get involved in education or uh, team building or training. And it's just great to see that it's actually happening now that people can actually bring it in, bring it into what they're trying to do to learn something. Mm, so, it was something I've always wanted to do as uh, with being a child in my childhood, but never could really tap into it because it was such a niche hobby here in Cornwall. Yeah. Um, it's very small down here. Yeah. Uh, there's only a couple of systems. Yeah. I'll say in the Midlands in the north, there are tons out there. So yeah, it's really harnessing on that. Yeah, really hard. Um, and sure. within education as well, it helps people not just with their social skills, with their uh, tea building. It also can help with their English and maths and understanding how to do maths properly and how to do English properly, how to write. I've learned so much maths from doing LARP and how to write properly through LARP. So, be a massive benefit then. So, it's, it's part of the Orkington, it's, it's just a win win. It's helped you yeah. socially and it's helped your education. It's it pushed your English and your math forward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it is. I think people sometimes underestimate that. Like things like LARP or D D massively help mm. help you in learning so many things you wouldn't think or you would you wouldn't think it could help you, but it really does. And then the other side of it is it, on the other side of that scale, it helps with the mental health. Yeah. It's such a mental health um kind of I'm not going to say a uh, solution because it, it, it has its benefits from yeah. doing it, but it doesn't always fix it. Yeah. It just helps with it. Yeah. I'd agree with that. Yeah. LARPing is definitely, it definitely helps mentally. I don't think there's any one cure or magic thing with mental health, but it definitely helps it. Hmm. Yeah. I think as well, it helps people who are new to the hobby that might be having People, for example, who have been in the army, yeah. uh, the armed forces, it's a way to focus their um, their minds on something that yeah. they know quite well. Yeah, um, that's why you see a lot of LARPers who are ex-military. Mm. Uh, Rob, you me do. and you've seen that quite a bit. Yeah, over the years. No, there are there's a lot of ex-military ex-services in LARP, and it it does seem to be an enormous benefit. In fact, I know there's a lot of people with mental health issues playing. In fact, I know there's a lot of people with mental and physical health issues playing LARP, and it really helps to both of those. Uh, it's why with um, Cosmos, we've actually made it very clear that mm. with our combat rules, for example, yeah, we are going to be accessible as we can. But we don't just want people to be healthy and like, oh, you can wear plate armor and have no issue. Yeah, we want players to come into the game who may have disabilities but still want to fight. Yeah, and able to do so um, within a safe manner. Obviously, if they're on crutches or whatever, it's a little bit harder. But um, as far as possible, you want this to be this what you're doing to be safe and accessible, and get as many people in. Yeah, uh, it's why if I actually get up my armor side of things, with for example our heavy armor. Yeah, there we go. now I've got it up. Yeah, when uh, you've got the rules up there, yeah. Yeah, so heavy armor, uh, where usually you'd find it being like pieces of metal, yeah, like plate, yeah, except uh, chain melons, etc. But because we're trying to be accessible to all disabilities as best as we can, okay, we're allowing players to wear foam chain pieces, uh, sure. film style stitched fabric chain mail, yeah, uh, leather foam chest plates, polyurethane, and etc. But it has to cover at least fifty percent of the location. And that's okay, so head, arms, chest, yeah. legs. Got to cover fifty percent of an area, but as long as it looks like metal, yeah, can be perfectly fine you for us. You don't need plate. Doesn't need to. Does not need to be steel. It can be something a bit easier to handle. Yeah, can be a lot easier to handle with with with, yeah. the, with things you're using. And plus, well, with the cost of living at crisis at the moment, it's mm. this. It's a lot about the money. Oh, yeah. Money is quite 
hard at the moment. So that's why we're trying to accessibly have that for people. That's actually a really big part of accessibility. It's not just mental health or physical health. A lot of it is just LARP isn't is not LARP looks like a really expensive hobby. And if you want to spend enough money, it can be a massively expensive hobby. But if you there are ways around that. And you can yeah. make it financially accessible. I think that's a great thing. Mm. Can only help bring more bring more people in. Yeah. And it really allows um people to really get in amongst our combats. We we want um our game not just to be a combat heavy game, but also to be a game where politics, military you can do military tactics, you could do religion, you can do all these crafting. But honing on the fact that people that actually want to do combat or want to wear armor during their weekend can yeah. and it's accessible. Awesome. No, that is so cool. Really, really, really cool. Okay, so um, that's, sounding, that's sounding pretty good, Jack. So um yeah. everybody watch anybody who's anybody's watching it, I'm gonna put some links up to Jack in the in the in the description. But meanwhile, Jack, could you tell people where they can find narrative legacies and clash of the cosmos? Yeah, uh, so I'll offer your videos, any videos you've made, please to be able to say yeah, with that. Of course. So now legacies you can find on the following things coming up as well. So we're getting a Facebook page launch for now legacies officially coming up. Okay. Uh you can find us on Instagram. Yeah. And you can find Clash of the Cosmos on both Facebook um and on YouTube. Um but narrative legacies and Clash of the Cosmos share the same um instagram okay that sounds cool well thank you jack and also thank you very much brilliant as absolutely always so thanks for doing this and thanks for explaining what you've been doing and what's going on okay yeah yeah thank you jack yeah is there any more questions you have like i can uh, answer quite a bit now i think that's all for now i think that's given everything we were hoping to do today so uh yeah that's cool. thank you so much yeah that's cool with me